a high-performance Mustang built to cruise in comfort. July 19th was a Tuesday back in 1966, and while the world was looking up to see American astronauts John Young and Michael Collins successfully break the altitude record of 412 miles in the Gemini 10 spacecraft, workers at the San Jose Ford assembly plant put the finishing touches on a candy apple red Mustang convertible. Well, lots of Mustangs, as 1966 saw the highest production of Mustangs ever with totals reaching over 607,000 for the year. But this one is special, and we'll show you why. It's a simple formula. You take a small, light car, throw a bunch of power at it, and you've got a super fun ride. And it gets better if it looks cool and the top goes down. The Mustang was in its second and a half year of production in 1966, and it still enjoyed a market all to itself. The Chevrolet guys were racing to get the Camaro ready for a 67 launch, and the Chrysler team didn't really have a direct competitor to the small, sleek, and fun Ford Mustang. The car was a huge success with the younger baby boomer crowd who were just starting to buy new cars when the Mustang debuted in 64 and a half. And before Mustang, their new car choices were limited to the stodgy cars their parents drove. And who wanted one of those? Mustang was built on a shortened Ford Falcon chassis, but featured sleek styling, a variety of options, and several performance levels. This one represents the top of the line for 66, with a 271 horsepower, high performance V8 engine. The fifth letter of the VIN denotes the factory installed engine on early Mustangs. And if you happen to have the letter K in yours, you've got a hot one. The K indicates the high po option was installed, starting with the 289 cubic inch V8 decked out with some speed goodies to bump the power level up to 271 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. These included stronger main bearing caps to keep the crank in place, oversized bolts so the connecting rods hang on, screw-in studs stabilized the rocker arms, and cups machined into the cylinder heads kept the valve springs in place while the solid lifter cam did its thing. The heads and intake were otherwise standard 289 parts, but the dual point distributor and exhaust manifolds were unique as was the water pump pulley, which was designed for higher RPM use. The automatic transmission was an option starting with 1966 K-Code Mustang. High pose suspension was upgraded with quicker steering, stiffer springs, and matching shock absorbers. And this one uses a 3.5 to 1 rear gear in the limited slip differential. Chrome 14 by 5 inch styled steel wheels conceal rear drum brakes and the optional front discs, although the system did not have power assist. We really dig the dual red band tires, and they look awesome against the black GT stripes on the side of the car. These cars are pretty hard to come by, as Ford only built 116 K-Code convertibles for 1966, and of those, only two had the bench seat and automatic transmission, so this could be the only one left. Does that make it more specialer? Well, I think so, but I like bench seats. Maybe I'm getting old, but that's comfortable. The most unusual element in this car is the factory installed bench seat. It might not be obvious at a glance as the center armrest folds down, leaving the seat backs to appear like buckets, but it's a true bench, and apparently it's one out of two or so K-Code drop tops that were ever built with a bench seat. The interior is well appointed with a rare remote trunk release, a wood steering wheel, and a power top, and the dash is stuffed with an 8-track player and an 8,000 RPM rally tack and clock living cool pods on the steering column. 
the 140 mile an hour speedometer tells us that this car has been enjoyed for over 74,000 miles, which was probably pretty easy to do with power, style, an open top, and a comfy seat. And here's a fun number for you. Considering the 607,568 66 Mustangs built, this one represents just three ten thousandths of one percent of total production. How about that? A nice red 289 Hypo K-Code drop top would brighten up anybody's day. And if you like this kind of stuff, we invite you to come on over to our website thing at musclecaroftheweek.com. We've got a couple hundred more cool car videos from the Brothers Collection, including some more K-Codes like this. And you can spend as much time as you'd like. We'll see you next time on another episode of Muscle Car of the Week.